Two new aircraft carriers equipped with a fleet of F-35s will form the backbone of the UK's defence in the coming years. HMS Queen Elizabeth has recently undergone trials with both Merlin and Chinook helicopters, but this autumn the UK's first F-35 stealth fighters will land on her decks, and that's where simulators at BAE come in. Brings F, checks complete, permission to launch the jets. Launch the jet. The Flyco team, responsible for controlling air operations on board the Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers, begin a simulation exercise. Just six months away from landing an F-35 on board for real, it's crucial everyone in the team knows exactly what will happen. Next door, another simulator of the fighter jet itself. The pilot, fresh in from Maryland where he's based, is Commander Nathan Gray. The aircraft carrier itself is purpose-built for the F-35 and I don't know any other carrier in the world that has been specifically built for an, a specific aircraft type. So we have a carrier that can incorporate the jet, that can communicate with the jet um, seamlessly. We have uh, an aircraft that is um, benign compared to certainly the legacy aircraft like the Sea Harrier, like the F-18, which I currently fly. It makes the whole environment safer, but it also makes the whole environment more efficient. And when you combine the two together, it makes it a truly potent fighting force. With the cost of both the carriers and the F-35s coming in at more than £14 billion, it's essential the aircraft and ship work together. And that includes rehearsing a manoeuvre that only the UK will perform. Traditionally, people will remember how a Harrier used to land on the aircraft carrier, uh, very much from, from a hover and a vertical landing. That will still be done with F-35, but to, um, to give us some performance enhancements with the aircraft, we're now doing something called a shipborne rolling vertical landing. So the aircraft will fly uh, towards the stern of the ship um, with forward speed on and then land from a rolling vertical landing and roll down the deck to a stop. Um, the advantage of that is it allows us to bring back more weapons and fuel, um, which makes us more efficient in the way we, uh, we deliver the aviation. So the aircraft under its own power will now uh, accelerate from a 350 foot position up the ramp get to jetborne to wingborne flight and then turn downwind about a mile ahead of the ship at 600 feet. The pilot's been timing his, uh, his launch based on the pitch of the ship as well and as you can see a fairly uh, good performance takeoff. When you walk into the Flyco simulator and you see the landscape around you, you see the sea and the motion of the ship, um, as, a, as a carrier strike maritime aviator you get that knot in your stomach that you, you feel like you're truly at sea. From the aircraft standpoint, it's, it's the most realistic sim that I've ever flown. So with full motion, um, with the helmet, with the symbology and with the graphics, um, this is the only simulator unique facility in the world where we've combined the true F-35 aircraft vehicle model with air wakes, with the ship motion. We've combined all those three together and then plugged it in with a Flyco um, simulator so we can run real-time real -time motion. It's, um, it's phenomenal. Are you excited? Really excited, yeah. To, uh, to be part of this program, to know that this is our lasting legacy for at least my lifetime. Um, we've got an aircraft and a carrier that it, it, will, it will change the, the way we do business as, as a Ministry of Defence and the way the UK can project its power abroad. The exercise here in Lancashire is now complete. In June, HMS Queen Elizabeth sails to the eastern seaboard, where it will begin the landing tests for real in the autumn. Hannah King, Forces News, in Wharton.